Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode of Time Capsule right here on the Games Done Quick Hotfix. Time Capsule is all about exploring one year in gaming and showing off games that were popular or influential at the time of their release, and tonight we have a super dark and stormy show for you. We will be traveling back to the year 2009 with two incredible games, Batman Arkham Asylum and later Demon Souls. But first, I have a couple of announcements for you. The Frame Fatales all-female speedrunning marathon is coming up February 23rd and will run until the 29th. Be sure to tune in for that. Also, SGDQ game submissions and on-site volunteer applications will go from March 4th through the 14th. So just go to gamesdonequick.com for more information on these upcoming event dates. Um, and with that, I do believe we are ready to get started. I have Nivlak here ready to show us Batman. Hey, Nivlak, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Welcome. We're good. Uh, <laughs> so Batman Arkham Asylum 2009. Let's do it. All righty. Yeah, let's go. So whenever you're ready to uh, start the game, I got the timer ready. Okay, I'll give you the countdown. It's when we first gain control of Batman. Sure. I'll give that give you that countdown shortly. Yeah, this is any percent easy. That was the, the setup there. Alrighty, get ready on time. You'll see me swerve to the left. <laughs> Go. All right, good luck. All right, so this game opens up with the walk, as we call it. It's about uh, six minutes, 43 seconds or so. Not a whole lot to do in here, just walk. There is one little uh, speed tech trick that I'll point out as we as we approach it. So for speed tech in this game, it mostly revolves around animation canceling and breaking animations. So the the most broken item is the explosive gel, which we get at about the 20-ish minute mark when we rescue the Batmobile. Once we have the gel in our possession, we can uh, break corner cover and we can store corner coordinates on our Batarang, and then we can use that to trick the game into flinging us across the map. And when when done right, with proper uh, corner facing and with proper timing, this can be done to get, you can do this to get out of bounds, you can go through walls, you can just kind of quick travel across some maps. Uh, it is limited in that it will always fling you in one direction for whatever map you're at, it'll always fling you towards the origin point of that map but there are some situations where you can we use it on like a uh, slanted surface to get height and I think there's even one where we uh, bounce off of some geometry to get a different heading and uh, that tech was found by Akion, a speedrunner and glitch hunter uh, I think in 2014 I want to say so I've been speedrunning this game on and off since mid 2013 so about oh, wow. six and a half years yeah you've been doing this a long time then yeah initially i was i was pretty casual i can't remember when exactly i started but i remember watching robo sparkle and honorable j race arkham asylum for the sgdq i think it was 2013 bonus stream do you think that's what inspired you to keep going with it or yeah i can't remember if i I think I had just taken an interest in it, and I watched that race, and then that's what kind of got me into actually doing it. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so, yeah, initially I was just kind of doing wall clock, seeing how fast I could beat it. But eventually I got got myself a timer and started actually timing the runs. At one point I got up to 7th, what would have been 7th on the boards. I think it was a 129 back then. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. And I laid off for a while. I hmm? imagine the straps have changed since then. <laughs> little bit. A little bit. Back then, it was mostly glitchless. It was oh, yeah, really... Okay. It was really only Bell Skip, which skips uh, Nightmare 2. Oh, and that right there, you notice me standing behind Frank Bowles. That is our speed tech for the intro. By standing behind him, you prevent him from walking backwards, which starts the cart moving, like 
a quarter of a second faster than it otherwise would. <laughs> That's a funny skew. Major gains. Can you smell the excitement in the air? No? Hmm. Must have been one of the guards then. Ah, uh, the introduction to Killer Croc. We actually just got some new, relatively new skips for Croc's lair. Oh, nice. They are a tad dangerous, but if you mess them up, it's just a time hit and you can still finish the lair normally, so we'll go for them and hope for the best. There's really only one... Well, there are two tricks that are potentially dangerous. One of them I'm not going to do because it's super minor. I can point it out, though. Marathon I'll do the motions, but not actually execute the trick. The other one is worth showing off. It's the bat claw skip. I almost never saw flock it. Jinx. Oh, um, it's like, but I do happen. have. Yeah, it could happen. I have a backup save. That's good. I have a, I have a ton of backup saves for practicing various things. Oh, Killer Croc is moody. Oh yeah, he's not happy about his situation in general. <laughs> oh no. I'll try and do a little clip here. It's nothing actual, actually useful as far as the run goes, but... Hey, I got it. Elevator clip. Wait for it. Oh my god, the cape. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't actually do anything as far as the run goes. It's just a bit of fun. It's funny, I was reading that it took like two years for uh, them just to design the cape <laughs> and like the physics. I remember hearing about that too. It's quite a long time for one cape. It certainly looks good though. It it's does. A good cape. It actually really does look very good. So well done to whoever was in charge of that. That's a, a shockingly long time, however. Never let me catch you this easily. Definitely. Well, yeah, you often hear that cloth and fabric physics are just, and like hair as well, are just the worst. Can't have that noodle hair. It's gotta look nice. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, if you're feeling feisty with this, you can drop, you can technically drop off and go see the guards, but there's a little risk involved in that. I've had guards not spawn and then be stuck at the bottom of the elevator before. Oh, you need trapped them to by a door that wouldn't open. Yeah, you need them to open the door. <laughs> yep. And for the cutscene, it teleports you back in. So yeah, when I first started this, like I said, it was almost glitchless. We had one skip for skipping Scarecrow 2. That was pretty much it. It was a kind of a trick battering throw. And we still have a version of that, although it's a new version of the old bell skip. But yeah, since then, Akion found the zipping technique, and then Runner started implementing that. Fionoris found a bunch of uh, bunch of zips and skips, and lately Sligfentry has been finding our most recent uh, skips. He's been finding them on, I think, Xbox 360. Oh, nice! You're playing this on PC, correct? I'm playing this on PC, and we play this at 30 FPS on PC. It's an I and I change because by default this game runs at 60. Are there like specific? things that you need 34 yes the okay. zips work very differently at 60 okay <laughs> and they are slower most of them don't work oh blocked by the bed i hate that Bit of a suboptimal opener. Got blocked by the geometry. So I'm about to duplicate some Riddler trophies. For extra experience. Oh, okay. These are just little things that you find throughout the game. Yep. There are 240 total oh my God. Uh, riddles. They're not all Riddler <laughs> trophies. Okay, okay. I was like, that's so many. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them are Riddler trophies, but there are riddles to solve. Uh, the, I think the Joker teeth are counted in that as well. These sets of Joker teeth, I should say. Oh, like the little chattering teeth? Yep. Yeah. And so we duplicate Riddler trophies by uh, binding the pickup key to uh, mouse wheel up. 
You can do it on mouse wheel down as well, but by our default is mouse wheel up. So you get your mouse wheel spinning as you move into range and it'll... There are 200 experience each, and I got 9,400 experience. So that's what, 47 epic. trophies picked up? <laughs> Very epic. And the way that works is just getting multiple inputs into a single frame of animation. It's technically doable with controller and on console, but you're hard pressed to get more than a couple. I find that it's like that with quite a few games where, you know, being on the controller doesn't always like work for certain stuff. Yeah. And I, I play most of this game with controller. I switch to keyboard and mouse just here and there. For like various, like differing parts of the run, you use one or the other. Yep. Cool. Jazz is down, but not for long. Like naturally, I use mouse wheel for duplicating Riddler trophies. Um, I typically use mouse clicking to skip cutscenes. It seems to go slightly faster. I don't know what the deal with that is. We also use mouse wheel to open grates faster as well. It's the uh, same keybind as picking up Riddler trophies. And we also use it to skip dialogue more quickly. Uh, aside from the intro, are there any sections of the run that you just cannot skip, like more cu kind of cutscenes? Cutscene-wise? Um, no. That's always nice for a speedrun. <laughs> yes, it is. Arkham City has, a, has two kind of unskippable cutscenes in it. I think they were there to hide loads, but they just made them unskippable. But yeah, every cutscene in Asylum is skippable. What is that stuff? Joker toxin. Listen, the room is full of poison gas. So yeah, did it did some more Riddler duping. Those aren't really necessary. Typically, a good dupe on the first one in your set. I just grabbed that other one just in case. How many are you duping like at a time? Uh, that first, well, depends on what you mean. I picked up 47 trophies on the okay. first one. Yeah, I'm not sure about the I second mean. one. I, didn't I guess I just kind of wondered, like, how many you can pick up at once with this trick. The most experience I've ever gotten was, I think, 22,000. Okay. That's, what, 110? But Quick typically, I, <laughs> typically I'll typically i get 40-ish uh, duplicated. So yeah, in, uh, on easy, your first upgrade should always be critical strikes. Because I think all the thugs go down in, I think, two critical strike hits. So that's the fastest way to get through fights. So this game does have like a move set upgrade, like yes. uh, so many experience points. Yep, experience points buys you your upgrades. Gotcha. So for this quote unquote fight, it's normally based on a timer. Mm hmm. But they also added like a little mercy feature. So since you're in tutorial land, if you get near death, the uh, Titan will just kind of fall over. Oh, true. So this is still con uh, considered the tutorial of the game. Yep. Oops. Yeah, so it's fastest there to just let the Titan beat you down in the corner until your health gets low. And then he keels over. <laughs> I'm over here. And I actually, when I threw that battering at Joker, that action cam uh, broke what it broke the camera that normally would have locked me down. Because normally, when the Titan's having a heart attack, it, the game locks you in place, so you can't actually do anything other than walk slowly. But having that action cam battering out kind of breaks that, and we'll be using that later on. Right there, it's just a bit of fun. You can jump kick him in the butt while he's going down. <laughs> Instead of watching him slowly die. Yep. I should go back to the hole. Very nice. Bowles wasn't too smart. He'll have left a trail. Alright, so we now know that Bowles is a traitor. We need to find a way to follow him. And he, he took Gordon too. Oh, no, this not shall Gordon. not stand. You can't stand for this, not at all. Nope. So we're going to the last known location. That guy will almost never hit you on easy. 
It always, almost always gives you animation priority. Ah. This is a little dialogue skip that I kind of got. You basically jump over the trigger that starts the dialogue, and then you run in and get an early scan on uh, Bowl's Whiskey Flask. So do you think a lot of these um, kind of small skips, they add up quite a bit? Yes. Okay. That that little skip is about, I think it's four to six seconds, something like that. Yeah, so if there's like a bunch in the run, then eventually that will kind of add up <laughs> to be quite a lot, I imagine. Indeed. So coming up here, when I get kind of up to the top here, we're going to have what we call the elevator jump. You normally have to do kind of a really long, slow shimmy across a large gap. But there's a little bit of odd geometry that you can uh, get yourself up onto in order to skip that. So this is one area where I switch to keyboard and mouse. So I find the, doing the lineup a little bit easier. It's good that the game will even recognize that you know, you're switching back and forth, because I know some games are fussy about that. Yes, this game handles it very fluidly. Yeah, that's great. You can just switch at will, no problems. You can use both at the same time, actually, too. <laughs> Wild. Which you can do um, to do a kind of a useless remote batarang trick. If you give it... If you make the remote <laughs> batarang... It useless. <laughs> it's... Well, the trick itself that I'm about yeah. to describe is useless. Yeah. You can just make the remote control battering fly in circles by making it turn the same direction on both keyboard and mouse at the same time. Oh, that's funny. Giving it double inputs will sharpen its turn angle. Nice. This hallway up here, the game wants you to go into detective vision. It'll tell you all about armed thugs, and you'll have a little discussion with Oracle. But on easy, we can just plow headfirst through the gunfire. It's a little bit faster because you skip the conversation. This guy up here can be a little bit of a problem. Hey, he went down. So often that battering doesn't knock him down for some reason. It's always nice when it does. So in this room is where the Riddler dialogue skip would normally be attempted in any percent. But there is a seemingly random chance that it soft, lock you, soft locks you because the riddle just doesn't spawn and then you're stuck in here. And you, we do this after the, uh, the second wave of the Predator room. I'll show the setup to it, but I'm not actually going to do it. Just to sure. be safe. Yeah. Totally cool. A lot of battering throwing. Throw that one there. It doesn't hit the guy, but it distracts them. It makes those two guards look up. While they're looking up. You can just run right past them. Somehow they don't see you. Room clear. So right here, this Riddler, uh, this Joker dialogue, there are three different lines he can give you. Two of them are fairly quick, and one of them, he just starts laughing at you, and it takes forever. <laughs> so is this it is random? The Which one? Yeah, it's random. Okay. This is the setup for the Riddler dialogue skip. You come over here, you go into that vent, trigger the checkpoint, and then checkpoint restart. And then it would skip this little bit of dialogue. It's like a 12-second time save, I think. Uh -huh. That's cool. Like I said, there's a seemingly random, seems to be roughly one in nine chance that the riddle won't spawn and then you're then you're stuck. So we'll just wait out the dialogue and scan the riddle, whatever whatever, whatever that riddle may be. Get some bat flaps in here. Yeah, if you just, ja like if you just jam the jam the left control stick left and right fast enough, you, know, you can get him to T pose. That's so funny. That's something I would do. <laughs> Good job. 
it was a right here, I'm going to attempt to animation cancel these doors. You really only get one chance at it. And it's a really minor time save. But I'll be doing that fairly regularly for most doors throughout the run. And you do that just by throwing an action cam batarang and opening the door kind of at the same time in very rapid succession. You can get the animation cancel. Nice. I'll be attempting to do that on some of the spore pickups in Croc Slayer as well. Those save a couple of seconds each. And there are five of them, so. I think it's frame perfect. We're only running at 30 FPS, so it's not too terribly difficult. Okay. But it's just hard enough. There's always something that's like that in a run. <laughs> yes, there is. All right, so we are basically out of tutorial land now. We made it. We made it. We made it out. So we're off to save the Batmobile. And get ourselves some explosive gel so we can start breaking things. Breaking things? That sounds good. Yep. One optimization that you can get on pretty much every fight in this game is trying to end it as close to the direction as you want to be going afterwards as possible. It's always a little thing to keep in mind. Oh, and here's the Ooh, Batmobile, double hit. Huh? Yep. Looking good. That was an okay fight. I had an unexpected double hit, which made me drop my combo. This is the only Arkham game that allows you to have one punch hit multiple guys at once. It can be good. It can also throw off your uh, your rhythm, though, if you're not expecting it and you get one. Oh, sure. Dropping combo is not a big deal. It's like super minor time loss. That right there was also another little animation cancel. If you dive roll right away when you're exploding your gel, then not Batman won't get knocked back and we'll just jump on through. So what I did right there on the corner, I got in the corner cover, did a quick throw batarang, and then detonated my gel as Batman's arm was kind of coming back across his knee after the quick throw batarang. Mm -hmm. That breaks me out of the corner cover, but it stores the fact that I'm in corner cover on my batarang. Oh, weird. So if I hold down aim and switch to batarang, Batman will kneel down like he's in corner cover. And then when you throw it, the game tries to reposition you. But the corner isn't there anymore. So it sends you flying, sometimes through walls, just like that. Haha, <laughs> that's really cool. That particular zip was found by Fionoris. It's a relatively new one. Got a little it's been around for a, a couple years at this point. So Dr. Skip is coming up next. We're going to clear out this predator room. And then normally you'd go down three different uh, wings of medical and save a doctor down each one. Or you can just zip out of bounds and glide to a loading zone and go straight to Scarecrow. Sorry, doctors. Okay, okay. You. Yeah. Uh, Ed, you, you know, they're fine. They're yeah, fine. They're fine. Oh, baby. I'm gonna pick up twin batarangs and remote control. Ooh, we got the twin batarangs now. Whoops. I throw that batarang right there to lure the guy on the catwalk over so he can receive a jump kicking. Oh, nice shot. Sometimes he gets you. So here's the zip out of bounds. Come around here and glide. Keep it tighter on the corner. Oh, no. I messed it up. Dr. Skip. Did you enter the void and get a little lost? The collision loaded underneath me. Oh, yeah. Because I ran into a wall coming around the corner. It's okay. So we have to attempt that again. Get down there with the other. Move it. Okay, okay, I hear you. I'm going. Why does he need the doctors? I've got to save him. It's 
So we can detonate this wall on the left as soon as that guy comes around the corner and it'll hit them both. Nightmare one, but we're not going to be hanging out in here too long. Good, because it's scary. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> oh, he's got Jim. Jim. No. Don't worry, Jim. We'll save you. This is a little cutscene that can't be skipped. A little bit, little bit of dialogue, I suppose. Don't worry, Brucey's gotcha. I'm sorry. Ooh, it seems we were too late. A bold Aww. move, killing off Jim so early in the series. Dang. Sorry. Sorry, Jim. We'll get our revenge on Scarecrow, though. <laughs> we'll zip down the hallway. Chain it. I actually just noticed in, in that scene with the gym that Batman's eyes are a bit scary because they're kind of red. Father, yeah, when you're in the fear gas area, his eyes go red. Yeah. And you start getting Dutch angles too on the camera shots. Mom? Alright, get a good look coming up here because we're only this is the only time we're gonna see Scarecrow in this run. Just that little bit. Ooh. That actually scared me. <laughs> like, actually scared me. <laughs> so we perform a zip right there. And then a couple more when we're up against the wall in the corner. And we just glide on through straight to the end. And the game doesn't even load Scarecrow's model here. So we're just fighting a spot of light with a spotlight, I suppose. I have not played through this entire game myself, but I have uh, played it a little, and that part I do remember being like quite crazy <laughs> or wild. Yeah, I'll, people really like the uh, the scarecrow areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just kind very of, like unique. Yeah, little uh, stealth traversal areas. We really don't do any of them in any percent. We enter that one, and the other two we skip entirely. Got corner cover storage again for a couple of just kind of travel zips on our way into Bane. This fight skip right here was found surprisingly late for how simple it is. It's always skip. something like that, though, something really simple that you, you, you're like, why didn't I think of this sooner? Yeah, why didn't I think to just run past them? Yeah. Give them the old see ya, lads. <laughs> Get a little zip down the vent there. We're into Bane Predator. Most of the Predator rooms in this game, you actually don't have to do. As long as you can get to the end or to a, a door without being discovered, the game will just let you on through. Once the Predator room engages, however, then the door is locked down and you have to complete it. Oh, okay. In this particular area, all we have to do is get to Jim. Just take out the one guy, run in the little trough, and we're into Bane. So Bane's a pretty easy fight on easy. We just face tank him. Mm -hmm. 
and we just he is and we try to try to position him to get charges right away so if you're kind of at the middle distance and walking slowly he will typically charge you rather than taunting or going to the wall to pick up rocks to throw at you so typically the third one here is the hardest is where he's most likely to get a taunt off Got him facing a good direction, though. Nice. A lot of times for that third charge, the thugs will drop down in front of him, and he'll opt for a taunt rather than charging through them. That's a good bane fight, though. Nice. On hard, that fight is significantly different because of the amount of damage he does. You really have to work on avoiding him and the thugs while still getting uh, your own damage in. Would you say that this category is the most popular to run, though? Oh, yeah. Any percent easy is the biggest board. The category. <laughs> yep. So we're going to be doing some uh, zipping here. Grapple to the left side of this pillar, and you can just uh, zip in place as soon as you climb up to go across the map. Now there's zip down this hallway. Chain it. Get a new corner. And we're off to do Bat Claw Skip. So normally we'd be heading off that direction to go to the Bat Cave and pick up the Bat Claw and then head to the mansion. But Slickman Tree, mad lad that he is, found a way to do a couple of zips to get past the grates in the mansion that you would normally need the Bat Claw for. And these are, the second one in particular is fairly crazy. You need a corner that had, that's a two-sided corner, one where you can turn Batman on the corner. You need that in storage. So that's what I grabbed at the end of that hallway back there when I grabbed a new corner. Because we're going to do a zip and then turn in mid-air. And then have that animation finish as we hit a rail, which will zip us further into the next room. So, here we go. Here's the first one to get into the antechamber. We're in. Nice. Now the next one. Alright, throw. Turn, turn. Oop. Am I okay? I might be, I might be bad. We're bad. This is where I have to load the backup save. Eh, ah, too bad. But that is why you made a backup save, so... That is why indeed. Very post back claw good. skip. <laughs> yeah, so what happened there was I paused too early. What you have to do is after the second zip, it puts you in to a double out of bounds situation. Mm-hmm. And you have to pause so that the collision loads around you. And I paused too early, and then I couldn't re-pause in time before I was out of bounds. Ah, uh, okay. At least we know how it works, though. Yeah. And after you get back in bounds, you have to run down the invisible room. Go up the stairs and through the doorway on the right to get to Zaz. So are you kind of like at that point walking in the void trying to figure out where you're going or? Yep. Uh, <laughs> imagine could be very tricky. Yeah, and you go through that when you go through the through the door, you then have to either fall for a minute and 15 seconds or alt F4. And we usually alt F4 because it's about 30 seconds faster. And then when you reload up the game, you're right where this backup save late uh, started me. Oh, interesting. Standing in the room, approaching Zaz. Alright, so we saved Dr. Young, but then she died in a cutscene. Got killed by the Joker in an exploding safe. Couple of zips on the way out. Oh, upcoming now is the new bell skip. So 
So, because of the whole bat claw thing. Uh, we would be trapped in that little gated area because normally you're supposed to break the this bell rope and which destroys the cage area before going into Zaz. By doing it out of order. Nice. Um, it's still there, so you need to find a way to figure out to figure out how to deal with it coming out. So I found that you could sneak a remote batarang through that security gate. And that after the Zaz section, the bell and the boards that are normally up there don't load. But the rope is still there. <laughs> so you can do a very long batarang throw. Yeah, that was very dramatic. And cut the bell, the Invisibel, as I dubbed it. Very I apologize nice. for nothing. Very nice, I approve. <laughs> and uh, that'll let you out and advance the game. That right there is the trickiest chain in the run. If your timing is off when chaining that storage after the first zip, you will go flying off uh, on the right side. It's not the end of the world. You just have to approach the penitentiary from Arkham North instead, which is a little bit slower, and you basically don't have a chance to skip the fight out front of the penitentiary. So you can go right past those guys with a well-executed... It's actually a pretty easy glide. Those guys will never see you, and you just go right through the right through the giant door that they somehow don't hear opening. <laughs> so that fight up there is what we're about to skip, or attempt to anyway. Glide yourself in the corner. Do your little zip for some height. I'm going to come in just under the loudspeaker. All right. We made it. Into the penitentiary. In we go. What? Oh, okay. Missed that last one, apparently. Grab some storage. There are only a couple of zips in here, and that's just to travel on over to the warden. Other than that, this penitentiary's done pretty normally. Just a little zip here and here and one more up here there's actually quite a lot of zips in this game oh yeah wow, wow, wow. we just seem to keep finding more too <laughs> that's good though it seems like the batman community is really close yeah always nice to see the speedrunning community can communicate with each other. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, the Batcave Discord is quite active. The Batcave Discord. Yeah, we're not a huge community, but everyone's very friendly. Whenever a new runner comes by, everyone's always ready to answer questions and Aww. help them out. <laughs> very sweet. So picking up the cryptographic sequencer from Sharp there updates our inventory, our gadget list, and we now have a bat claw, even though we never went and picked one up. You stay Which is going to be useful. This gate when I leave. So we pick up the cryptographic sequencer upgrades. Range being the more important one, but power is also nice as well. So we zipped past a cutscene trigger. We're actually going to take a second here. Meyer Ivy's hair. Very nice. Stop, stop Batman, please! You've got to help my thing. So because we zip past the uh, cutscene trigger on the way in, it kind of messes things up on the way out, and we just get some get a bit of disembodied hair there, just floating there. You guys are idiots! <laughs> solid fight. Both of those fights can be tricky, kind of depending on where guys go. We have a pretty good system for the one up top, but 
every now and then one of those thugs just does something weird and throws off your whole rhythm. Yeah, rogue thugs. Yep. The one in the hallway is always a little bit tricky, just because it can be hard to tell who you're going to hit. And so it's very possible for someone to sneak in a punch on you. Do a little dive roll at this door. It puts you in and that activates the cutscene at the earliest, earliest possible moment. The Dork Knight. <laughs> Ooh, the Insta. So all these scans are random. I was just positioning the sticks and hope I get lucky, which I did. Try and get those instant scans. Yeah, because you have to sit there for a bit and kind of try to adjust it so it gets on the green. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's what the uh, the power upgrade does. It makes. It gives you, like, basically wider angles for the oh, okay. sticks to be in. Well, that's very convenient, actually. Indeed. It's a useful upgrade. I'm gonna try and single... I'm gonna try and get through this door on a single scan. Hey, you made it. That's a little bit tight. It can be difficult to do. Having the dialogue uh, skip on mouse wheel helps significantly. Just a little pointless calendar man scan run by. Because we can. So this is why, this right here specifically is why we buy the range upgrade for the scanner. We can nail this one. How about I switch to the right gadget? Where are you? There it is. There it is. So we can nail this scan without having to go upstairs. That's such a far range. Nice. It is. It's a good upgrade. I don't know who found that scan originally that's been around for a while, but they are a genius. So we run over here to the right, and that will trigger the first wave to come in through the center rather than from the right side, which is where they normally come out. Doing that, it's by itself saves about 10 seconds in this fight. So we want to get these guys stuck down here. The floor takes care of them. So these are Harley's goons? Yep. <laughs> Gotta be careful of the baton guys. So even if you're near them, you can kind of run into their batons and take damage. Does it stun there. you for like a few seconds as well, or? No, it doesn't have a stun effect. It's oh, a okay. rough fight. <laughs> but it, it does cause damage and drops your combo. There we go. I have to shout out to uh, chat. They're hardly a challenge. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> like it yeah it's not a it's not a difficult fight it's difficult to optimize though the chat getting a good harley fight like a nice fast one is always difficult oh sure just beating it however is quite easy yeah the harley fight and also the titans right before joker or another fight that's uh very annoying to get to get optimally. Do you actually fight Harley or just the? Goons? No, Batman takes care of her in a cutscene. Ah, okay. After you finish the uh, encounter with her goons. So now, I think during that cutscene, Batman scans Harley's fingerprints, and we're supposed to follow them, and they lead us to the botanical garden. Or rather, once we're there, we. We scan for her fingerprints to find the secret layer, the secret lab. Botanical garden sounds nice, though. Yeah. That's, uh, that's where Ivy hangs out once she got loose, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Yeah. That's, that right there is my favorite uh, zip lineup, the jump kick into a zip. 
<laughs> just happens cool. to put you in the perfect position. Yeah, I actually really uh, like the movement in this game. It's quite pleasing to look at. <laughs> yeah, and since uh, the penitentiary's been emptied out, we have some maniacs running around the island now. We can avoid most of them. Or just jump, kick, and run. That guy gets thwarted by the loading zone. <laughs> it's like back. He's powerless. You're powerless against the loading zone. His one weakness. <laughs> In the garden, we are going to... I forget, what, I forget what we call this skip anymore. It's the botanical garden skip. Normally you'd have to go down a wing of the garden, rescue a janitor, turn off some power, and then clear out the predator room, and then proceed to chase Joker. We're just gonna chase Joker. Just make our way quietly over here. This is another kind of dangerous zip. Just get yourself right here. We'll step off. Turn this way. Zip. Because that water is electrified, and so if you touch it, you die. By walking off the planter right next to the stairs, you land on a part of the stairs that's technically just above the water. And so on that slanted surface, we can then do a zip to get height and glide around to here and proceed to this predator room. So yeah, if you're a little bit off on walking off that planter or something like that, you end up in the, end up in the spicy water. Ooh, and you have to <laughs> no, you have to restart from checkpoint. You have to try and get corner outside in the predator room, which is a little bit dangerous. But we made it. In this room, you're supposed to take out the operator first. That's what uh, Batman tells you to do. But as long as you're fast enough, it doesn't really matter. As long as you get to him, you yoink that guy off into the void. Don't worry, he's fine. Batman doesn't kill. And that's where the Harley fingerprint scan comes in. It reveals this thing in the secret door. Every time he uses the scanner, it just looks like he's like taking a quick moment to like play his Wii or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Busting out the switch, a little yeah. Breath of the Wild to chill. Just like Breath of the Wild real quick, before we do these fingerprints. So for Titans on easy, you want to do punch downs and then gel them. Because two rounds of gels will get them dizzy again. And then you can just kind of punch them again to take out their section of health bar. Just kind of cycle them. This is another one where on hard, the amount of health that they have changes this fight up quite a bit. Because the, this strategy, while still fast, is not nearly as effective. Gel to finish them off. We have to take out, take out the Titan tanks. The gel is so funny too because it's like he's fighting these enemies and then oh Aura. hold on guys real quick let me just do some graffiti. Yeah. <laughs> really make him know I don't like him. And he always lays it down in the shape of a bat symbol. I was. Uh, reading also that with the uh, gel, the sound effect was actually created by a can of whipped cream. So I don't know how true that is in terms of. Oh, really? I'm sure you've heard it a million times. What do you think? Does it sound like that? I would say it sounds slightly deeper, but I I could imagine you could get that sound out of a can of whipped cream. They maybe they like just kind of adjusted it a little, but. <laughs> yeah, just maybe pitch it down slightly. Yeah. Yeah, I could see, I could see it. Just Batman things. 
All right, well, now I got the line launcher. Other than zipping, the line launcher is the fastest way to travel in this game. But you need kind of flat, uh, flat long surfaces in order to make use of it. More or less. So to get out of here, we're going to do a little zip. We're going to do the safe version. There's another one that's slightly faster. Unless it doesn't work and you end up in the wrong place, in which case it's way slower. So we get corner cover storage in there. We run up on this little rock. Do a nice slow zip. Press A to climb. And we're on our way out. Okay, more storage here. That uh, dropping off the line launcher is a little bit tricky. If you jump, if you drop off too early, they see you. If you drop off too late, you hit a surprisingly low wall on that arch, oh, weird. and then they also see you. So that little line launch over the vines isn't actually intended, but it works out quite nicely. It's been a long time since I've done it normally. I think the game wants you to kind of do a climb around and go under. It honestly looked year. intended. <laughs> I know. There's a little zip you can do right here in order to get up to the sewer area sooner, but it's pretty precise. I'm just going to do the safe approach via the line launcher. Oh, now he just looks like he's having fun on the zip line. <laughs> I would. He could walk, but he's not going to. So much faster and more fun to line launch. It, it, it does seem very fun. So since we skipped the bat claw earlier, that wall is still there. So we need to get one foot off the edge there. We'll zip, kind of tilt the camera. There we go. Up to zip. Chain it. Glide down, hit the middle of this door. This is actually pretty forgiving, but hit it right there. Now we need to cancel it. Hey, first try. Uh oh. I may have gotten stuck too long. Uh oh. Okay, we're fine. As long as you can get the line launch off, you're good. That was an awesome skip. Looked really good. Yeah, that is. Ooh, I got the jump too. That is one of the newest finds by Sleekfin Tree. Oh, yeah. Uh, he I'll calls it Layer Link. Uh, two, three months? Maybe three oh. months. Oh, that's very fresh. Yes. And he had uh, that zip that outside that I skipped was also part of it. But it's, yeah, just a little dangerous. Mm -hmm. So now we have storage coming into Croc's Layer. Provided I don't get myself killed right here. <laughs> okay, good. And there are a couple of zips we can do in Croc's Lair. The first one being the most dangerous, but if you get eaten, then, well, you just finish Croc's Lair normally. The way we used to in the speedrun. So he's lurking around somewhere. Oh yeah, he's all over the place in here. There he is. So we used to do this entirely differently. We used to get the spores in the order three, four, five, two, one. But now we go kind of the intended route because we have a zip from spore five to get out quickly. So here's the first zip right after I collect this spore. This is the most dangerous one. So we're going to be zipping past an angry croc. There's a chance, if you mistime it or misposition it, that he'll just uh, grab you and eat you. Oh no. Gotta get out of here. Made it. Hey. So another zip, and we keep chaining our storage. This is a scripted... Croc has several scripted pop-ups, this being one of them. 
where he breaks through the walls. Fortunately for us. <laughs> it's like no no issue. He walks through the door he busts through the door and you're just like boop. Yep. Well look at the size of him. He's a huge dude. I know. He's like twelve feet tall. Goodness. Just line launch past him right there. So on that last spore, you may have noticed Batman just kind of standing there. It's because the animation canceled the pickup. And that saves like two, two and a half seconds per pickup. Oh, You'll see the little meter still filling. It still kind of locks you in place, but it's faster than doing the full animation. Alright, so we have one spore left. And hopefully, a series of zips that will get us out pretty quickly. That's a typical pop up for Croc right there. That's what we usually want to see. Oh, I missed the cancel on that last one. Okay, we've got all the spores we need. I wonder Q. why he's not wearing any protective, I've got enough spores. like, I need mouth to get covering. And formulate the he's just, like, in there. <laughs> That's actually a good point. <laughs> he does not fear those spores, apparently. Batman, you're so silly. Oracle, I'm getting out of here. What about Croc? He won't be a problem. Where are we? Okay, good, that zip worked. Sometimes when Croc jumps up right before you zip there, it doesn't work fully. We got the zip, so we're now back at the beginning and on our way out. Oh. I bet Croc's gonna jump up on me right here. Yes, he is. What happens more often than not is that uh, right after the last zip, Croc will do the thing where he breaks the boards under you. Uh, and then on your way out, you can get out without him jumping up at you at all. But the last couple of times I've done this, he's broken the boards later, and then he's gotten a jump up on me on the way out. Yeah, so those zips kind of break the intro and the outro for Croc's lair. Uh, it's, quite, it's a significant time save doing full zips plus uh, the zip outside. I think it's about a minute. Oh wow, that is quite hefty. Yeah, if you can execute it all. So he's gone. He's gone now. Croc is gone. He's an Easter egg in Arkham City. <laughs> and he doesn't show up again until Arkham Knight DLC. Season of Infamy. Pretty good DLC. So you are very experienced in all of the Batman games, uh, it sounds like, anyway. <laughs> I'm most experienced in this game, mm -hmm. then probably City, then Night. I've only done a couple of glitchless Origins runs. Were you a big Batman fan growing up, or...? Not so much. I used to no. watch the Adam West show when I was a kid. Okay. The reruns of that. Um, but other than that, I've mostly just watched Batman movies and then games. And then you decided this was the one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I really liked this game when it when it first came out. It took me a while to actually start playing it. I remember the Games for Windows Live version is what I got. And every time I sat down to play it, Games for Windows Live needed to update. Oh, no. And those updates always took forever. <laughs> yeah, definitely did. See, so yeah, I was happy when they switched this over to Steam. <laughs> okay, a little zip here. Do a little step forward. And a zip into the glide. And that just skips eh, kind of a, a long glide. It's like, say, seven, seven, eight seconds or something. I'm going to do a checkpoint restart coming up here, and this will reset the thug positions in the sewers. And hopefully, one of Ivy's spores that will spawn will take out a bunch of them for us. 
hopefully. There they are. Come on, Ivy, help us out. Oh, she got a couple. Hate it when they dodge the Ultra Claw. Come on. Oh my gosh. These guys are the real Batman. What do you call it when it's you're in that sort of bat scan mode where like everything is purple? That is detective vision. Detective vision. It's it's a mood. I, I like it. Yeah, it's good. I remember that actually being one of the criticisms of the game was that people really? found it too useful and would never turn it off. Oh, and funny. so they never see like the real game world. Oh, so in theory, you could just play the entire game in detective mode. Pretty much. Haha, <laughs> weird. Unfortunately, nothing that simple. Oh no. I'm in the main yeah, slow version. And it appears to be polluted with Titan. Why? So that is the sewer jump. I actually got the desirable high fast uh, zip. I didn't get turned in time to actually grab onto the ledge. I'll shut them all down. So now we're approaching the sewer pump area. And boy, the Titan fight in this area used to be a real, uh, used to be a real gamble as far as the runs would go. So we had a real precise way to do it, uh, or to not do most of the fight and kind of escape the area early. Then Sligventry came to the rescue, <laughs> and he found the sewer pump skip, which is what we're going to be doing right now. So we're going to end up right behind that door straight in front of me after doing a couple of zips. Just kind of yoink those guys down the stairs to get them out of the way. Stand up on this rubble. We'll zip. Chain it. Now we're out of bounds. Now we need to get back inbounds. Kind of stand in the middle of this thing. Turn this way. Zip. Crouch. Through the wall. We're into the elevator. The elevator shaft. Don't get stuck. Okay. There's a very minor chance of getting caught in the wall right down there. Happens almost never, but it can. You just kind of fall in the wrong place, and then the collision just traps you forever. <laughs> All right, we're out. Yeah, seems like you got it. Good job. And we're on our way to Ivy. We're basically in the home stretch here. We have Ivy. We have the pre-Joker Titans. And then we have Joker. That's pretty much it. We need to see um, Ivy about some flowers for Valentine's Day. Yeah. I think she'll be I think she'll play nice and let us have some of her flowers. I hope so. They're kind of like her children though. It might be a, a faux pas to ask. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should cut ourselves off there. My babies know your every move. You and your kind are arrogant enough to think you can I actually did no damage runs of this just a couple of weeks ago. Easy and hard. And this approach changed significantly because those those ivy pods are a real pain just the rate at which uh, they open up and shoot their spores at you it's very unpredictable all right little uh line launch over the over the, over the, over the vines my babies are growing so for the ivy fight we're gonna be, we're gonna let her ground vines grab us intentionally, because when she does that, she opens up her shield, and you can sneak in a batarang to get a critical hit. So in phase one, hopefully we'll get four crits, and then in phase two, it's a little the window for crits is a lot smaller. It's a lot more difficult to pull off. Hopefully we can get three or four. Ideally, you only need three in phase two, if you're really uh quick on your battering spam. You can get away with just three of them. Alright, here we go. Poison Ivy. So we get over here. Aim your multis. 
And as soon as that vine starts retracting from the ground, you throw your multis. And they should get her for the crit. It's a pretty wide window. So you always don't try to preemptively throw your multis, just wait for the wait for the visual. And you'll get it. See so you said it's that first vine. Yep. Not too bad of a visual, I'd say. As soon as it starts coming out. As soon as the big one starts retracting from the ground. And for the battering spam, we actually have a little uh, rhythm for it. We want to throw one normal, then multi, then three normal, then multi, and then three more, and then you just kind of cycle it from there. Because that interrupts uh, the throwing animation, and so you can get them out slightly quicker. Oh goodness, I didn't realize she was actually in the plant. Oh yeah. Hello. <laughs> I always think the part of the plant that's right behind her looks like a giant face hugger from Aliens. I can see that. See? Hey, I got that one. So in phase two, I find the left and right sides easier to t It's the center that's usually the hardest for me. I need help here, boys. Now in terms hey, of I got it. In terms of targeting, is it just, like, uh, the main, like, it's just her, or, or do you target the tendrils on the side? No, all the batterings go straight for her shield. Straight for her shield, okay. Some of the multis might target one of her spores as they're on the way down, because they can break those. But you want them to hit her shield. That's where the damage is done. So it's just a matter of wearing down her shield until she falls. Yep. Hey, I got all three crits. That's a good IV fight. That's one of the best IV fights, actually. Hitting all the crits and only needing three in phase two. Very good. <laughs> and then I put the gel down on the floor instead of on her. Gotta, you gotta leave with that graffiti. See yep. ya, nerd. <laughs> Alright, this is the, the final area coming up. So, okay. in the visitor center, the visitor center is kind of a special area of the game. You can kind of go there throughout the game and you'll get various Joker dialogues. But what's interesting about it is that it locks you into first-person camera, and you can't use any gadgets or run or do anything. It's a very locked-down area. But Sligventry found a way to break that uh, in what was used to be a very difficult skip to perform. You'd have to cancel the door going in, and then throw an action cam battering at the right time as the scene faded. But then Bepsi found another way to break it, a much easier way. We just open the door, start spamming action cam batterings. Get that, and that breaks the camera and allows us to go right through that glass, which has no hit detection. And we can skip all of Joker's uh, little spiel, which is about 45, 50 seconds. Yeah, this place seems really secure if you can go straight through the window. <laughs> There used to be an older skip that was incredibly inconsistent that we called the broom jump. So there's a broom leaning up against that window, and you could kind of walk, partially walk up it and then get the collision to bounce you up and over the lip of the floor and then go through the window. I performed it once. I think Fully Automato got it a couple of times in a run. It was a huge pain. Everyone hated it, so we're very <laughs> glad that we have an actual consistent skip now. Good, good. Consistency is key. Yes. Yeah, okay, they're getting up. This fight is one of the worst in terms of just little RNG that throws off doing it optimally. Is anyone up? Yes, you are. Because there's so many thugs running around and positioning them getting them positioned to all be hit by your gel to be knocked down is very difficult. It's very often, even when you get them positioned correctly, sometimes they'll just get early for unknown reasons and hit you while you're putting down your gel, which interrupts the animation and throws off the whole rhythm. And you can, it's very easy to lose 10 to 20 seconds on that fight. But that one went pretty well. I think it All was well. Joker's clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. 
All that's left is the jokester himself. Alright. So we just kind of lead him around. Ideally, he ends this uh, chase phase right up there at the front, where he'll just jump back up. We place down a gel to detonate these guys, hopefully, into the fence. Get a bat claw on those guys so the fall damage takes them out. Or at least one of them. And we just kind of finish this fight normally, more or less. So yeah, knocking a thug into the fence will knock them out immediately. Not a huge deal on easy. On hard, the strategy is to get near a fence and just bat claw guys into it. This fight is such a spectacle. There's like the spotlights all around and the. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you got the electricity arcs, the, electricity. the Joker floor. Yeah, yeah. Got Jim up there, the helicopter. Yeah, the helicopter. That's good. And the whole floor is wired with explosive. Yeah, this is a three-phase fight. Phase two is usually the most awkward just because those positioning of those knife guys. You get the first one with the gel, and then try and get the other one into the fence as quickly as you can. Alright, so time will be coming up pretty soon. There's okay. one more pull down on Joker. And the final time will be when uh, the button prompt fades away. I'll call it out. Sure. In phase three, you always get this one guy coming up on your coming up behind you here, him. You can sometimes get a hit off. But you can all you can usually get a counter in in time. Alright, time coming up. And time. Alright. Oh, and that is that. This, this is brutal. <laughs> brutal to watch. <laughs> I can take it. I can take anything you throw at me back. Do we want to cut the ending or do you want to show it? Oh, well, um, it's completely up to you, but thank you so much, Nave Black, for just showing this runoff. Um, I really oh, enjoyed this. It was really good, and we can show the ending for sure. Okay. It's fairly short. And there is one more unofficial part of the run coming up <laughs> no. post credits. Credits are skippable, though, so. And that is, uh, someone is going to grab a floating crate of Titan. It's either oh going to be Scarecrow, Bane, or Croc. It's random. Oof. So uh, get what your guesses your... in now, yeah, chat. Yeah, get your bets in. Get your bets in. Ooh, what's my bet? I don't know. I usually go with Bane. Okay, I'll go with Bane, too. The Doctors are treating the injured, but it looks like it'll take some time. All super criminals are back in custody. Yeah, in uh, Arkham City, Bane is the one who's kind of dealing with the post-asylum titan issues. So he seems to be the canonical ending. But in the Arkham City game files, the only one that doesn't have a villain's name on it is the Scarecrow file. So... <laughs> could argue that he's the canonical ending. Could, could, could do that. Thanks, Jim. But I have one on the way. I know at least one runner who argues that. <laughs> Stay safe, Jim. All right, here comes the Titan grab. What's it gonna be? Ooh, it's Scarecrow. The suspense was killing me. Yep. <laughs> All right, ban everyone that didn't guess Scarecrow. Yep, Them's sorry. the rules. Those are the rules, <laughs> chat. No. Thank you so much again uh, for running this. Thoroughly Absolutely. enjoyed it. Thank uh, you for I having hope, me. Yeah, I hope everybody here in the, 
the chat enjoyed the the run as well uh we are going to take a quick ad break uh and then we'll be back with demon souls so stay tuned Ooh, nice Hello everyone, welcome back to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Hotfix. I am your host, Smooth Operative, and right now I have a rare Saint Million in the hot seat for Demon Souls with commentary by Craigan. Gentlemen, are we ready? I'm ready. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Craigan, are you ready? Oh, okay. Uh oh. Actually, what's the password for the, the Zoom? <laughs> There's no <laughs> password. <laughs> but it's, a, it's asking me for a Free password. Access. I can't get in. Oh no. <laughs> we can't start until Craig and can see all my failures. <laughs> Here, we'll edit the appearance real quick. We gotta spice it up a little bit. What are you gonna name the character? What should we name it? I named it Hotfix because I have no creativity in my body. I think that's allowed. Okay. <laughs> that's what the Hotfix looks like today. Looking good. <clears throat> I guess we can just go ahead and start and they'll get sorted shortly. So, yeah. I can do a countdown. Three, sure. two, one, go. Three, yeah. two, one, go. You got this. So, this route, um, previously, for a very long time in Demon Souls, uh, the most commonly known fastest route in the game was using magic. Um, but in recent years, people have kind of developed the route a little bit. People started using a really big sword called the Dragon Bone Smasher for a while, and that was kind of fast. But um, there was some more optimizations, and now there's kind of this melee route where you use just the battle axe and a longbow. So that is the strats that we're going to be using here. You have thrown magic to the wayside. Yes, no magic allowed in this run. I'm so sad. That was like all I ran for like two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I spent a lot of time on that magic route. So we just got hit in the back there. Um, if you swap weapons uh, between specific weapons, you can actually cancel certain damage animations and just kind of cancel and keep running. They'll come in the hand. They'll come in handy a couple times throughout the run. Yeah, you can pretty much do that in almost all the Souls games now. Uh, well, maybe not DS2, but mm -hmm. like, we don't talk about that one. So we just picked up some fire bombs, which is going to be really useful against the uh, first boss coming up here. And we're going to do a lot of these dash attacks because there's going to be a lot of times in this game where enemies just get stuck in your way and you can't just run around them. There's a lot of very narrow levels in this game, so you will need to find ways around them. And by you, I mean me. <laughs> Well, you are us since you named the character Hotfix, so... That's true, we're all... Good job, everybody. We are all the same blob. By the way, now that we're passing this enemy who pushed down the boulder, there's a glitch where basically if you press start, I guess at the, like, the same time as you cancel the cutscene that starts when you enter this area for the first time, and it causes the game to lag for a few seconds, and for some reason after that, like three or four enemies just fail to load. And one of them being that NPC who kicks on the boulder, but the boulder still gets pushed, but just by nobody. So it's yeah, it's like funny. really weird timing. You can usually just mash start, which I was trying to do, but I guess I didn't get it. But yeah, it's just like there'll just be random spots where enemies are not anymore. But yeah, a little bit earlier when you saw us roll onto the boulder and we just kind of slid off of it. As long as your iframes from your dodge touch the boulder, it kind of gives you immunity from damage from that object for a little bit. And uh, that's the first time that happened. It comes up a few more times. I'm going to heal here just because, yeah, you know, anything can happen on this bridge. It's the, not the, the hardest bridge, thing. The, grid, the bridge is a great place. It's not that at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> See, this guy's already giving me the business. And the spear guys are probably the worst since they attack the fastest. But if they do, yeah. like, the weird swipe that you would never do with an actual spear, then that's, yeah. that's the best attack that they need. For some reason, the most devastating attack with the spear is the attack that should not be done with the spear. They're like, oh, this thrusting weapon, I should just swipe it from left yeah, to right. That should very work. <laughs> uh, so we just unlocked the boss, and we grabbed an item called Turpentine, which is a magic buff to your weapon that applies fire damage which is going to come in handy for the Phalanx boss, who is covered in tiny enemies who are weak to fire. And I'm going to make sure I don't die here. Hey, we did it. Look at us go. 
little shortcut. You can actually die as soon as you pick up the turpentine. You'll still end up in a pretty good spot time-wise to get to the boss, but if you come down this tower, it's slightly faster. So now we put turpentine on our battle axe. We're gonna go fight the boss. There's a lot of falling with style in this game. Yeah, a lot of Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> You also fall very slowly, kind of like you're almost a feather. Whereas in other Souls games, you just like, fall like a brick and actually take a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like actually the damage, the fall damage is pretty forgiving in this game. Oh, yeah, I mean, even um, dexterity allows you, by leveling up, dexterity allows you to just reduce how much fall damage you take. Although it's not a lot, but you already don't take that very much, even mm, yeah. without leveling dex. Gonna pop the heal just cause why not? We're gonna have quite a few uh, save strats. Uh, if you've watched any kind of any percent run on the leaderboards, uh, I'm looking for hardstone here, but it looks like we'll just have to buy some later. Was um, that last one you picked up? Not a hardstone. It was a sharp stone. Uh -huh. Runs over. I know. <laughs> Reset. But um, yeah, we're gonna be doing some a little bit of safe strats. We're gonna be duping some items. That's cheating. Uh, because it's cheating. That's true. It's speedrunning tech. Which is cheating, <laughs> as YouTube comments have told me. <laughs> Do you really get YouTube comments like that? Oh, yeah. I think it's just like like the law of nature. I like the ones. Speedrun. <laughs> My favorite YouTube posts. comments on speedrun videos are like, oh, yeah, well, I did this faster with Firestorm. <laughs> I definitely did it. <laughs> I beat this game in 30 minutes. So we just picked up some new moon grass there, which is a full HP recovery item. Uh, we're going to be duping that in a little bit. That's the best healing item. Well, actually, I think dark moon grass. Yeah, is. there's dark moon that does the same thing, but cures all status ailments. But yeah. there's there's no easily available dark moon grass, unfortunately. Yeah, the only but one I know of a pickup is like in 5-2 in the boss room of Dirty Colossus, I think. Yeah, it's way out of the way. So we're gonna talk to the monumental, some lore. We're gonna skip it, mm. and then just gonna grab this uh, stone of ephemeral eyes and load the game. Yeah, for whatever reason, when you reload your game here, it just takes you back to the statue at the very bottom instead of where you last stood. You, you could also, also use, use the Nexial Binding, which is slightly faster. I don't think we need the two thousand souls we have, but can help the only the only reason i did that is because i didn't get a hard stone from phalanx so i'm just gonna buy it from the filthy man here. right if you normally picked up the no got a hard stone drop he wouldn't need to do that so he wouldn't yeah. have to worry about the souls yeah this is definitely slower but it's fine and hard stone give me that we only need one because oh we got uh we got a ui glitch that's fine <laughs> <laughs> that's i haven't seen this in a while that's one of my favorite glitches Sure. I don't think I have ever seen this. Well, clearly you didn't go fast enough during your playthrough. No. My actual favorite glitch no. is soft locking on Dragon God. Oh yeah, I soft locked earlier, so I'm not going to be Nexial binding uh, anything. Because <laughs> I do not want that to happen. So, this is all purely just safety strats. We're, this is how you dupe. You kind of manipulate uh, the menus to use a Nexial binding when you deposit an item. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure how it works. I just know it works. But it deposits like 1,000 something. Yeah, like 1,032, which is such an odd number. Yeah. And then when you take it out, you can only take out 99, and that resets what's in your bank to 99. But like this is more than we'll ever need. Yeah. Uh, sticky white stuff. We just picked that up in this level. We're gonna go back there. I duped it because in, just in case we need more than two uh, for these next couple bosses. Um, it's really useful and the reason that we go to world two first is because we can kill these bosses really fast at the beginning of the run with sticky white stuff, which is a item that applies magic damage to your weapon. And um, you also get a bunch of souls like really quick from the dragon god the flame lurker uh, but not the armored spider probably because hopefully we'll be skipping it yeah That's even if we plan. do even if we don't skip it we'll be fighting a much easier version of it yes it's it's basically completely harmless 
mostly. I'm just nervous about these guys, so I'm gonna heal because I've been <laughs> wombo comboed by these guys a couple times. Oh, I, I see. Yeah. Those, those guys did that guy some just pretty super good armored me. That was not cool. Whatever. So here we're gonna go out of bounds simply by sprinting over the ledge and into this little area. Now over here, I'm gonna try to do this skip. Okay, I didn't get the super fast skip. So we ran out of bounds and we dropped off a ledge into sort of a deloaded area where the second level of this world is supposed to be. Um, so by loading there and kind of like walking and hitting that tunnel, hitting that tunnel slope, that tunnel is part of the second level. Um, because I landed on the slope and not really a flat surface, it tried to save my location on that slope. So now that I'm loading again, I'm just going to be falling because it, it, I'm loading on a slope. So now I'm falling and the game doesn't know exactly where I am, but it knows we're in level two because we touched level two. So because of that, it's going to place us where the beginning of level two is, which is supposed to be the armored spider archstone. So we're going to load in right behind the armored spider. We can actually look back as he's shaking his booty back there. We're not going to fight him. We're just going to continue. Oh. Oh, you want, you want me to fight him? Yeah, you um, looked like you had fun <laughs> fighting him on your SL1 walking only over encumbered. Uh, sorry, he, my new shenanigans. He is actually kind of fun during that. He sounded like you were having fun during it. Oh, yeah. Screams <laughs> of agony. It's a very interesting idea of fun. <laughs> yes. So we killed that miner because he has some more hardstone upgrade materials for our weapons during this run. The battle axe and the longbow, coincidentally, both use hardstone. So it's very nice that we can uh, dupe and collect all the items necessary to upgrade them later. So here we're just kind of falling down. Oh, Lord. Everything's... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fight the armored spider. <laughs> My favorite. So if you, if you die here or at the flame lurker, uh, you load behind the fog gate, so you will have to fight the armored spider. So now you get the full all bosses experience. Oh, wait, except for old, old hero, hero. Unless something else bad happens. But now, that were me. If this run were done by me, I would have died on that first jump down. <laughs> yes. I hate that, that first, first jump, jump. That first jump is deceptively, like, tricky. It, it has no business being as hard as it is. What I normally do is I just hit like the tip of like the vertical column and I just fall after that. Yeah, you can. There's like, no ground underneath there. It just shoots you off to the left a lot too. It's it's really wonky. On that note, let's see what happens now. I know there's a delay for you guys, so I'll just let you kind of wait in suspense. You made it. That's right. God, I'm like. This isn't like too hard. I'm just like extra nervous doing it now. <laughs> oh no. I made it. Right. That trick, yeah? Yes. Good. Yeah, me spooked for a second. <laughs> I was like, why did he say, oh no? All right, so fl the flame lurker is the real oh no. So this guy is kind of notoriously a really difficult melee boss. In the magic route, you fight him a little bit later when you've already power spiked a couple times. Um, he's very trivial at that point, but in this route, you kind of need to really kind of work around the RNG he gives you. And the sticky white stuff is all your damage for this. And normally in a run, you would only have two sticky white stuff if we weren't duping those. And yeah. uh, normally you would need three, but you can soft dupe like you can in Dark Souls where you just roll and then go into your menu and act like you're using a Crescent Moon Grass. And instead of using the sticky white stuff, it uses the grass, but still applies the buff to your weapon. Yeah. It's a nice like little backup strat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this guy's beating. Ooh. I hate that quick swipe. He can do that quick swipe with either of his arms. If he does it with his right arm, it has way longer range 
it feels like, and it does a little bit more damage. All right, so we have the first sticky white. I'm gonna apply another one. It's kind of odd, and I feel like his second phase is a lot easier than his first, because his jump that he does is really leaves him wide open. Yeah. But he does hit harder. Than yeah, and he just kind of, when he's not jumping, he just kind of constantly does the exploding punches. Yeah. But if, if you know they're coming, you can always dodge behind him and just get some hits on him. So he's tricky to learn for sure. Right. First try, yeah. GG. First yeah. try, GG. World record. Also, <laughs> fun fact for Flame Lurker, apparently all of his grunts and roars were recorded or are recordings of a constipated from software employee. Wow. <laughs> Excuse you? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Explain yourself right now. A bit of knowledge there. <laughs> I can thank EMB for getting, extracting that information from Miyazaki himself. The nickname bro himself. Dark yes. the Souls YouTuber. Long time. Uh, why were they recording that? I don't know. Let's just <laughs> let's just not answer that. Maybe we're, Miyazaki we're just this. heard it like I got an idea. <laughs> hey, he's constipated. Get the mic. <laughs> Uh, so this, anyone who knows Bed of Chaos and Dark Souls, this is Bed of Chaos beta. Um, pretty much there's a little bit of manipulation on the timing of baiting his attacks. Uh, just like subtle movements, you just don't want to get caught in his Dragon's Breath. We just picked up the Master's Ring, which is super useful for the Battle Axe and I think Halberds? And probably some other weapons. I think it's for blunt and slashing weapons, like the axe. Oh, okay. Like pretty much the axes and hammers or maces. It's such gotcha. an odd thing. I don't know why it's only those weapon types. Yeah, so what it does is it boosts the direct hit of like the axe part of your axe or whatever weapon it is you're using. And it's a pretty free ring to grab since it's right there at Dragon God on the way to killing Dragon God. Uh, nice damage boost for the battle axe. The only bad side, the downside of it is if you don't get like a direct hit, then you do even less damage than you would have done if you didn't have the ring on. Mm-hmm. Ooh. That is a very almost Nexial Binding <laughs> Dawn accident. If you Nexial Binding during the, uh, during the duping phase, you pretty much you still use the Nexial Binding and lose all your souls. You still get the dupe, though. Yeah. That's why I didn't use my Dragon God Salt quite yet. So I was like, in case that happens, I can just take my Dragon God Soul. If you did, yeah, if you did that, you would have had to dupe the hard demon. No, not the hard demon soul, the lead demon soul. The lead, lead demon soul. At that point, I would just go back and get the flame markers uh, thing, <laughs> which I have done in practice. But um, yeah, this is our first big power spike. We just duplicated all the hardstone materials that we got. And um, you don't have to withdraw them if they're in your bank or a uh, stockpile Thomas, then you can just use them freely. You can actually see the chunks of hard stone is like, yeah, just turned into plus 99, but it was at plus 1032. So we take our battle axe all the way to plus nine and then longbow to plus eight, but I like to do it to plus nine just because slightly more damage. It's fun. More damage is always good. Yeah, that's great. Now we're gonna little, give the little man in black a little visit. What? The good thing about this it. run is that you only have to level up once, where in Magic Rod you have to level up twice. Yes. And on the first level up, she's always standing in the spot next to Ed, Baldwin and Thomas. But the second time, she can be in a, new, in a number of place, places along the Nexus. And yeah, the second time in Magic would be like... So... When you come back from Latria, would be, would be your second and last uh, level up. So the best part would be for her to be right there next to the Archstone, but her worst one could location could be on the complete opposite side of the Nexus from you, where you come back. That's and that would waste a lot of time. It's but now you just level up once. Yeah. So not including just looking around and be like, where the hell? <laughs> where the hell is she? But yeah, it is super nice that she's always there in this route and you only need to level once. So we went and grabbed a key and uh, it's uh, slightly faster to just Nexial Binding back and then run straight back to the intro to Latria. 
And we're going here next um, instead of other worlds because there's a ring we want called a Clever Rat's Ring. And also this world is fairly easy to do just in general, starting out. Yeah, there's um, really not a whole lot of enemies that are bad here. They mostly yeah. kind of just ignore you. The only ones that actually attack are the mind flayers that shoot uh, disco balls at you that electrify you. Or soul rays, which they could... There's a skip that we're about to do here, and if they shoot soul rays, we're going to have a problem. But hopefully it all goes well. So this is a three-leveled... Uh, level? Three-leveled prison? But we can kind of try to go for a little skip here. There's a little hole here in the fence that we can use to run off. Oh, land perfectly on the rail. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, uh, I've never had this happen. Um, this happened in practice earlier. Oh, God. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You're on the railing. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, my God. I'm the best. What? That was perfect. Oh, I've my never, God. I've never seen that animation while backstepping onto that fence. It totally mind. intended. Holy that was Lord. amazing. <laughs> sure. Somebody clip that. <laughs> Dude, he saved was, your run. <laughs> that was the most like marathon version of that <laughs> trick that could be done. Alright, so here's the clever rat string. It's on this dangerous bridge. And we're good. Yeah. Normally you would want to take a lot more damage because you would, as soon as you get yeah. hit by that, you would be in hyper range, hyper mode range with your HP. Yeah. So the clever rat's ring, um, when you equip it, if you are at thirty percent or lower health, you get a fifty percent damage boost. Um, hyper mode in like Demon Souls lingo is technically the clever rat's ring plus a, another weapon called the Morian blade which does something similar, it's if you're at 30% health, you get a 60% damage boost, which applies to your already 150% damage, so it potentially goes up to 240%, and that would be technically the usual hyper mode, but we're not gonna... It's not feasible to get the Morian Blade in the run. This uh, game's broken. This game is broken, but it's cool. This guy, he's dodging me. And by dodging, I mean I can't aim. Are you zoomed in? Yes. Oh, I, I actually did not know zooming in was a thing with bows for the long I, time. I haven't done it in forever until I learned this route. I'm still going to heal because I'm just horrified this black phantom's going to like snipe me out of midair or something. Yeah, her bolts actually do a lot of damage compared to what actual yeah. bolts do in this game. Dang it, I want to take a counter hit. Okay, cool. Uh, counter hits. You take more damage when you're kind of backstepping or getting caught in a roll um, where you don't have iframes. And it's really useful because sometimes if you just kind of memorize the damage an enemy can do to you uh, and you want to set up for Clever Rat's Ring, and you're like, ah, the air attack won't exactly do that much. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and backstep and they'll do a little bit more damage. This is a fool's idol. She's dead. <laughs> That's a boss. Yeah. If, if you don't kill her there, things get a little bit crazy. Yeah, then she uh, teleports and then makes copies of herself and you have to find which one is the real one. And there are traps on the floor that Which is probably you. the worst part because then she's like, oh, there you are, and then just shoots you. And then yeah, they all it. just fire on you. Um, normally in any percent you would stay in hyper mode, but I'm healing just because uh, dying on this level is a massive run back like at any point. This is probably the biggest Longest level in the game, right next to 5-2. I'm not sure which one is longer. Yeah, I would say both of those are definitely the longest. Especially dying. Like, dying in those areas is just equals a long run back. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, though, if you've got, like, all your... Uh, in Latria, if you've uh, disabled both towers and the hearts dropped, then... And you die on the boss. The run back to the boss isn't that bad, but in five two, yeah. the run back is still just as long as getting through the entire. I can level. show it. I can show it. The boss uh, stairs are right over there, blocked by the big heart. Um, I've always I've tested so many different things to try to skip over the little blockage that leads to the stairs, but because that would save a lot of time if you could just run up to man eaters. But I've, I've tried every weapon animation, sprinting attack, all sorts of things. You can kind of get up. The, like artery that's blocking the stairs. Um, haven't found it yet. 
The closest we've come is probably Luna's, Argentius's method, where he got, he forced himself on two pots and then ran for like five minutes straight. And then he broke the pots, which launched him because he gained Whoa. speed by doing those five minutes. And he just launched himself across the map. And he thought he could try and launch himself vertically what? above the, the heart. Unfortunately, he never found a method to be able to launch himself. That's amazing. I didn't, I didn't even know that. It was weird seeing Love that Love launch and demon souls. So yeah, we're just running up. Here's one of the chains. You just gotta kill the guys around it. Optimal killing right here. This is a shame that we one. can't skip this area because there's nothing of value here. There's really nothing. Uh, actually, way back in the day when it was just like Japanese runners were the top runners of the game, the strats was to go and kill Yurt and take his armor because of yeah. the disease resistance for the swamp. That was the first run I saw of this, and the o Otsunari was the runner I saw, and he just, mm -hmm. you only got it for the Plague Swamp, really, in 5-3, uh, and that's just and, a small part of it. <laughs> and technically, there was a hyper mode set up for it, and it was like, okay, yeah, sure, I guess that makes sense, but then people just slowly figured out, like, killing Yurt takes a while, and you don't really need that. You can just, like, use healing items. Right. But uh, you had a. Cool you were the one who actually told me that, there was, like, when I started running that route, you were like, "Uh, there's a different video." <laughs> just yeah, the other one. Atsunari was one Japanese runner, and Twilight was the other one. Those were like yeah. the two Japanese runners who were kind of the best. Yeah, Otsunari's PB was the one who used the Yurt's armor uh, route, and I was and I told you during your one of your streams that I first caught. That, I, that was the route I was running, and like, oh, there's a better one, just go watch Twilight, and that's, yeah. that's what I did. <laughs> the old days, that was like 2014, 2015, or something you know, crazy. Mid, like, early 2014, I think that was April. Mm-hmm. The olden days. There I weren't a lot of NA Demon Souls we're, runners. We're so old now. We're old school, you might say. Uh, that was cringy. <laughs> <laughs> never, never let me say that. I'm going to let you say it again. So yeah, I'm not going to say it again. So this is, like, you can clearly see, this is a long as hell level, and it's just, like, nothing. I'm going to go ahead and load here. Um, you don't have to do that. If you're optimal and fast enough, you can catch this elevator that's coming up. But if you load right here, it kind of sets the elevator up just perfectly for you to run on there. Um, which is nice, because these gargoyles on this bridge, um, they're a little aggressive, and they can kind of rush you down as you're waiting for the elevator. Yeah, the elevator to come back down is like close to 15 seconds of waiting. It's very long. And you have to survive those 15 seconds <laughs> from mm -hmm. the gargoyles. There's and two if... that can just come up to your face, and then there's one that shoots arrows at you. Yeah, and if you're doing an any percent run and you're in hyper mode and just trying to stay in hyper mode, that's a lot scarier. Because there's and such you can low. mostly block them but you're also have a shield that doesn't block 100% physical damage which yeah that's true you, you'd have some health to play with but yeah it's always scary always scary so I'm gonna get into hyper mode uh, we have access to the man eater boss fight now and I have a little scorpion friend I like to talk to before uh, the man eaters to pump me up <laughs> Right on this bridge he's up here. Gonna give you advice. Yeah, he's gonna. One of his many faces. What do I do? Talk. You. Oh, he's. <laughs> do he's some. Broken. Oh my god. He's just chilling. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> god. At least you didn't. No, no, not, not oh, that. No, I spoke <laughs> too soon. <laughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not good. That was oh, there's even a Oh my god, no scorpion mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's this is tragic. In quite a few of my runs, like he would just like if you just run by him, he would just jump off the edge and he would take you with him. Yeah, that happened yeah. to me so many times. He's he's a little trickster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Woo. Oh, they're doing the Lunge attacks. All right, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Scorpion. 
it's ironic whenever sometimes you just need an enemy to hit you and they'll just like <laughs> stare at you like well, are you trying to speed run <laughs> <laughs> i don't think so well, can i watch <laughs> yeah can i watch <laughs> where are you going <laughs> So yeah, these are the stairs that were just barely blocked off. It's a little bit of a run back, but not too not too bad if you're like trying to kill the boss. Then we have this black friend on the mind flyer who can just run around and he's just two steps behind us, shooting in the wrong direction. Yes. He always scares me. His, his, he can shoot soul rays at you. They never hit you, but they always horrify me. Yeah, they come very like, close, but they never actually hit you. Yeah, when running this game, you run into a lot of, like, little new ways to die, and I feel like that one's just, like, waiting to happen. Like, somehow he just, like, leads his shot. So we're gonna turpentine our weapon here. Finally made it to man -eater. Yeah, trying to make quick work of this guy. Oh. So you'd never want him to jump off the bridge, because he can do all sorts of nonsense and take all sorts of time. So you always you can, want to try to lead his dives on the bridge. Yeah, you can kind of manipulate them, but sometimes they just don't do anything regardless of what you do. Like sometimes they'll land on the bridge and then immediately walk off. Oh god. Where did he, or they did he just did he just Oh, pull? no, he's coming. Okay. This is not ideal. Okay. I, I really thought he went under the bridge. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I thought he plummeted down. Because when I that happens, that. they, they kind of just never come back up. Yeah, they can kind of soft lock on you. I call that the red hot chili pepper. <laughs> All right. Nice. Easy peasy. Easy, easy. So every. Oh, good. I wonder what voice clips. What farm salt employee did that? The their <laughs> It's, it's oh, just oh all my... constipated people. Oh my god. <laughs> Even. The false king. Stop. <laughs> just like talking. Like, oh, oh, dude, that was know, Miyazaki but... himself. <laughs> Miyazaki was constipated himself when he recorded this. And they do have a lot of bosses yelling and screaming. <laughs> so this boss coming up here. Oh, you want a soul ray? Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, we don't actually need to kill anyone here. Oh, well, except for the, the the baby scorpion things. Yeah. So this boss is usually, if you played online, a PvP boss. This would be a player, but if it's just. Uh, offline, he's just kind of a guy with claws and homing soul arrow. Bit of a pushover. He can sneak in a quick claw attack on you, but you don't want to chance it. So yeah, you can survive one punch if you have like enough HP. Like thirty percent HP exactly. Yeah. So that's a lot you're done. Oh hi, maiden. Sorry, we don't need to level up anymore. I'm sorry. You're, you're used, no longer useful. Yeah, that was like perfect spot for her, but you know. She's like, need please, you. please go back to Magic Route so I can use more. Please, do you need to level? <laughs> I need something to do. So this is everybody's favorite world. Is it? I actually like this world a little bit. I like the story behind this world, actually. Yeah, everyone does seem to like Astraea's lore. Saint Astraea and um, the plague and stuff like that, but good lord, it's just like not a fun casual area. As Tippy could probably attest to, who plays casually. Just I mean, I'm not but. saying I died to the big trolls often, but I, I did. Oh, well, their <laughs> attacks, troll city. Their troll attacks city. really suck. Like the push attack that just has no wind up whatsoever. Like they just like. Sissy slap you like five times in a row. Ow. And that just does a lot of damage. I think like the big problem with this area is it's easy to get like overwhelmed by a lot of enemies. Yeah, yeah they're all clumped sure. up together. Like this yeah, room they're... you're in right now has like five hidden enemies. In yeah, the... they're really like hugged up. A lot of them just play dead. Like so you this... run past them and then they're just like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm waking up now. 
<laughs> yeah, so on this bridge you need to be a little careful. Uh, you want to kill those guys at range because that big troll at the very end, he if he runs onto the bridge, uh, you have to kill him. Unless he like randomly backs up. And he can that really and slow you down. That you can't, and the like, troll behind him. you is no. also... Dang. Oh, no. Oh, skip. So yeah, I tried to use uh, turpentine on a little slope there. Uh, if you do it just right, then you can apply magic to your weapon, but kind of skip the animation as you slide off. Uh, Leechmonger, he's really weak to fire, and he just kind of flails around. He's, he's nothing special. I am going to grab his soul from this archstone, because during practice earlier, I got to the end right before Dirty Colossus, and I fell into a spot I could not get out of. And I was like, oh... I guess I have to Nexial Binding, and I didn't pick up the Leechmonger soul, so I had to run all the way back from the very first Archstone, which is fine. Yeah, it's weird that you have to pick up the Ball soul to be actually able to warp back to that Archstone. Yeah, it is weird. The only case where that isn't the case is if you've beaten the final boss of each world and yep. picked up the soul from that Archstone. Then you'll be able to uh, warp back to any Archstone in between the first one and the last one. So, this is 5-2. This is when we were talking about really long levels. This is one of them. The Swamp. Um, there is a bit of tech, though, if you notice. My switch, one hand to two hand. The stamina goes up ever so slightly. That's that's the tech for this level. It's really cool. It's the coolest. Does that do anything in terms of like you getting poisoned or not? No. No. You're, it's still the same rate still... of poison. Okay. But Another... we do want the poison though because by the end by the time the poison wears off we'll be at the end of the stage and we'll be in hyper mode oh, okay and we'll want that for the boss i may not use hyper mode for this boss just because I, I have ptsd from my <laughs> gdq run oh, no. oh where i had to run through the swamp twice because i just was i just messed up kind of at the dirty colossus i don't know also this man eater didn't even um or not man eater Mildred. Like <laughs> this, Mildred. This third man eater that just, <laughs> yeah, just a man eater shows up, shoots a sonic wave. Oh I want to play that that game where you can like <laughs> hack bosses into like random places. A Demon Souls randomizer would be pretty cool. My favorite so randomizer yeah, just... is sound randomizers. <laughs> just have a bunch of different sound effects that replace all Souls game sound effects. It sounds awful. Uh, like, like what? <laughs> Replace what with what, for example? Um, you could have the Tommy, Tommy Wiseau. Oh, hey, Don. Oh, hey, Danny. Replace, like, your footsteps. Oh, my God. <laughs> Actually, a sidebar that has nothing to do with a Souls game. Uh, <laughs> I used to play this shooter, a uh, third-person shooter, uh, Jedi Academy Online, and uh, somebody released this mod that was supposed to be like an HD realistic sound mod or something for like footsteps and all this other stuff. And literally it just replaced every sound effect in the game with Jar Jar screaming. <laughs> it, it, it was awful. Wow. It was so loud. Uh, I am gonna, I'm gonna be a little safe here and heal because good lord, I don't want to run through again. Oh, I don't like this. That's the push I'm talking about. That shaman got the glowing... I, I thought the shaman was going right, so I went left, but he juked me. They just, like, that's the thing, they just have no wind up for that attack and they just go. Yeah. It's the worst. And they move so fast. So we put on the thief's ring that we picked up just now because you don't want to go into this troll town uh, in a speed run with no cloak or thief's ring. Cloak is more effective than thief's ring for sure. But if I was not wearing this, all these trolls would be moving a lot sooner and blocking a lot of my paths. But now that we're through there, we're going to equip the Master's Ring again. And we picked up some black turpentine. Ooh, no, I got to equip it. Where'd it go? Ah. Now we'll start without it. No. So yeah, this fight would be much, much faster. Uh, with the Clever Rats buff. But, um... 
one thing about this boss fight is, uh, and Craig, maybe you can clear up some more on this because I never quite understood it. Is he has like a little side projectile that can come out sometimes? Yeah, that's only if you break his left arm, like the stuff that's on it. Oh, that's the stuff so that's just broke. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the stuff he just broke, and so now it's going to happen. Ah, I learned something. That's interesting. We all learned something today. The best strat to fight that boss is to stay hug his right side, your left. And when he does his swipes with his right arm, if you hug his left side like that, he kind of just misses you if you just keep on walking left. So you can just mm -hmm. keep on attacking. Yeah, he doesn't really combo anymore either. Yeah. But if he so does I the to slam, the... you gotta, gotta get out of the way. Yeah. So I ran to the fire there to kind of get a little bit of extra damage to go into hyper mode. I do want hyper mode for this boss fight. In the magic route, you would go to the right over here and just go straight to St. Astraya and do a couple hyper mode yes. homing soul arrows real quick before Garl, v Garl Vinland comes and kills you. But instead, with the melee route, we're going to go straight to Garl Vinland. Um, Garl Vinland is really resistant to magic, all his armor and shield and stuff like that. But with melee, he is not as effective. So fortunately, his axe defense is not very good. Yes, axe defense, the stat in the game. And once Girl's dead, and you go talk to Santa Astraya, she just is like, all right, GG. You just tell her, I beat, your, I beat up your boyfriend. It's like, I killed your carry. What up? And the beat will never drop. Yeah. It's the best song in the game. You don't hear it for too long, but... It really is. It's great. Yeah, it's a good song. So we're going to World 4 now. And in the very f this very beginning of this level is one of the most notorious skips in this entire run. Uh, I call it just the 4-1 skip. Some people call it the hill skip. But um, there's a hill that you can roll up here that saves a bit of time. But you also have these skeletons who damage you by rolling. They roll faster than you sprint. There's a lot of them, and all of their attacks are random. So I'm going to see if I can get one attempt off. It's like a serious roll off in this area. That was really close, actually. Yeah, you got a lot of good RNG from the skeletons. They yeah, a lot of I blew down. it, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't oh, say they're in the tunnel. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so you have to deal with this if you mess it up. All right, well, that's fine. So going up here, there's a little shortcut you can take that leads you straight to the boss. It just skips the entire level. It, it skips it. all of it. Oh man, that's nice. Yeah. Casually, there's a lot of run back. But uh, I'm also going to try to do a hyper mode setup and hopefully not die. Dagger cancel before that last one kills us, and then we're off to the boss. I'm actually going to use a Crescent Moongrass real quick to fix my HP. Because we're going to take a little drop here. So the Adjudicator, in the... Oh, get down here. In the Magic Route, you just Flame Toss him, and you actually go to this world really early on. Yes, the second level you come to. And the reason you, you do that... Yeah, go ahead. For the Crescent Falchion plus one, which is probably the main weapon you use for that friend. Since you're, since you're a magician, it's going to scale off your magic stat, which has a, it has an A plus rating on that weapon. Mm -hmm. But even then, it's <laughs> by the end of time you finish Latry anyway, you, you're just done with using weapons. You just blast everything with homing soul arrow and soul ray. Yeah. It does have some utility, like getting some enemies out of the way, but yeah, it, it gets trivialized a little bit later. But it is a good twink weapon. Yes, it like, is very good. You just want like quick damage. Uh, so we just ran off here. We equipped the cat's ring. So I'm going to load right when I hit the ground. So the cat's ring reduces fall damage, but it also gives a little bit extra of a buffer before the fall damage registers. So when I fell down out of bounds, you can load the game as you hit the ground and it'll save your location, but still, I guess, processing the fall damage. So if you time it, it's actually pretty forgiving. Um, you load out of bounds and we just skipped all of 4-2 and the 4-2 boss and we're in the Storm Ruler arena. And now we have to use the bow again, which I hate, but 
We need to kill six of these guys. Oh, a lot of people coming. So there's three. Six of them brings the Storm King down. I said Storm Ruler. That's the weapon that you can use optionally. Was that four? Yep. Five. Uh, six. All right, now we need to book it. So now that we killed six, the Storm King is going to start coming down, and we want to run to a spot where all the other rays, Manta Rays, are going to leave us alone, so I'm also equip the Thieves Ring. Wow, that one was really close. Yeah, I heard it, and I was like, that sounded like it was right behind me, so I'm going to touch. So now he's coming down. If we time it just right, we can get a one-cycle kill. Yeah. Nice, didn't run away from me that time. I know, God. <laughs> if, so the bow is really janky in this game. If you were to like switch targets, because for some reason the Storm King has like multiple targets all over him, you pretty much just want to aim for the middle. Um, if you switch targets while you're like drawing and shooting your bow, it'll just cancel the attack completely. So you need to be careful when you switch targets on the boss, because you might potentially just miss the one cycle. And it's like quite a time loss if you miss it, no? Yeah, he has to make like a whole big loop around. It's yeah. like it's 20 annoying. to 30 seconds or something. You also have to find a new shelter too, so you don't get hit by his tendrils yeah. or whatever they are on the way back. So I'm going to stop sprinting just before this tunnel. Um, it's a little manipulation on the dragon for the first bridge if you come out sprinting on this bridge the dragon comes out faster um but if you kind of know the area to slow down at he comes a lot more delayed and uh if you were doing any percent runs of this game you'd probably do some quit outs and reloads just to manipulate where the dragon is i'm gonna have to dodge this fire i didn't do it that's fine but um, if you're doing any percent, you probably want to load and quit or whatever, because you can make sure the dragon is ideally where you want them to be. I'm going to hang out with these dudes for a little bit while the dragon comes on this uh, bridge again. And then go. Hopefully that's good. There's a, a lot of more quit outs happening with any percent these days. Yeah. And the reason that is... Quit out. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's Souls games things. It's like in-game time is kind of like the lesser evil of like, especially with this game, real time versus game time. Uh, I'm gonna real quick deep strain. More on that later. We got a Tower Knight to fight. So we put Black <laughs> Turpentine on our dagger, which has very fast attack speed. We're just gonna very quickly slice his heals. Bring him right down. And we're just gonna whack on his head. Well, we just get pelted with arrows. Who's the real boss in this fight? Yeah, <laughs> archers are the real boss. Totally. Oh, yeah, the archers are actually like way harder. Assuming you don't fight them. If you just go up and fight them, they're like, oh god, I didn't expect him to come up here. What <laughs> they're like, doing? what? And that's also kind of like a rough run back casually on the Tower Knight. Got to run through all those bridges again. So we got another boulder, fire boulder here. We're just going to roll past it. And these guys are going to break through these boxes. I'm going to load my game. And this is going to reset their positions because they are all blocking this very narrow alleyway. Yeah, but that's a one-time event. Or like Once they've broken through there, they, they don't do that again. The next time they disappear, they right, appear right behind you. Fun fact about that fire boulder, your camera can get stuck on it and move away from the player character. What? That's never happened to me. I, it killed one of my runs once. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Let's try it with this one. Okay. Like, like I just saw my character getting farther and farther away from the camera. <laughs> like, I was wait. like, where are you going? I'm it's on like your record pace. It's like your run being pulled away from you. Like, oh, <laughs> come back. Where are you going? 
for my sub 44. <laughs> Come on, it's, it's, it's getting smaller. <laughs> so that red-eye knight. The red-eye knights in this level are really spooky. Uh, luckily, a uh, sprinting R1 from the battle axe is really nice for getting like anyone out of your way. And we got another boulder here. Just roll right past it. Uh, Penetrator. Also, there are strats to get to 30% health, but again, because this run back is so long, and just any any weird mix up from the Penetrator can happen, because he has some combos, and every once in a while he can kind of stagger one of his attacks and do a weird timed horizontal attack. Uh, that's the one that usually uh, gets me. So I'm going to go in with full health, but we're still going to use our Black Turpentine and Master's Ring and everything. Hopefully do some big damage. Also, these guys are completely random. These um, are the real penetrators. They yeah, they suck. These guys can just kill you if they want, which is another reason why I didn't want to do hyper Yeah, their their charge is like a four hit combo. And there's three of them. Two of them can charge you pretty quick, and the third one can get over there if the other two are hitting you. So we got the penetrator and demon. Yeah, Penetrator does more slash attacks than does thrusting attacks, which is kind of odd. That's true. Oh, there's one of the soldiers right there outside the phone gate. He's like, oh, Let me he in. wants to play. <laughs> Let me in. Let me in. Yeah, and the Penetrator's actual penetrating attack is like extremely easy to dodge. Um, saying that, I'm probably gonna get hit by it. I'm just gonna, just gonna make sure we're all good here. Oh, you got sidesteps. Easy fight. No problems whatsoever. I am gonna grab this soul, just in case. This game is the easiest. I'm gonna do a real lazy hyper mode setup here. <laughs> Oh. Oh, that's weird. Give me... There we go. So we still have the Thief's Ring on, which is important for this level. Uh, we're going to skip those Black Phantoms, and luckily they, they're not too aggressive, especially when you have the Thief's Ring on. But uh, in this tower, and kind of some enemies after this tower, um, the Thief's Ring or Cloak is, like, super necessary to get through relatively safe, or else enemies start really getting in your way too fast. So we got another dragon segment. And we're going to kind of time it again just so the dragon's hitting the last part of the bridge. There are like three pieces to each of these bridges. You want to make sure he's hitting the last one. That flame toss. Also those, yeah, the fat man yeah, and the flame juice. toss and really <laughs> ruin your day. All the, the top speedrunners, they do the look back strats while running into the camera. And I would it's always just use like, I would just listen and be like, I, yeah, I I'm too shooting I'm, too lazy. I'm like, is he, do I hear a swish thing? And I kind of, his animation has a really long tail for flame toss. So like rub his belly or something. And then you'll laugh and then yeah, you hear it go like, off. Yeah, I'll dodge I now, guess, I, I guess. I guess I'll roll now. Yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah, see, <laughs> It's us old school speedrunners being real lazy. I guess I just don't. I just don't like claw grip. <laughs> I claw grip, and I still don't look behind me because I like <laughs> my camera to be a certain speed. Also, there's Ostrava, the Black Phantom. He's the son of the king. If you don't help him along throughout the game, he's the Black Phantom here. So sad. So I like throwing the soul, soul remains off the cliff. He just runs after them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can just make him jump off. He's not very bright. Yeah, soul remains are really good in this game. Like almost every enemy goes after them. Whereas in Dark Souls, like the Alluring Skulls, which does have, serve the same purpose, like most enemies don't care for them. It's mostly just the hollows. Yeah. So I'm gonna try CRR Clever Rat's Ring one time on this guy. If I die, uh, I'm gonna just come back up and do it full health. So False King. Uh, in the melee route, he's actually pretty simple, but you still need to be very careful. He can uh, pull out some super fast, quick attacks, but you basically just always want to 
not die. You always want to kind of like bait his dash attack out because uh, I can't get close enough to that. That was a little too far away. You want to bait out that attack that he's doing or his dash attack, both of which leave him really wide open. It's always nice to go to his back. You can get three hits in. You can get four hits in. It's a little cheekier, a little bit more dangerous. Uh, I can't get behind him here, so I'm just going to smack him. Yeah, well, that could be scary because he has some uh, animation cancels. Like, if you hit him from the front, yes, you can potentially be, like, hit back immediately. Like, there's just no wind-up. He just immediately does, like, a horizontal thrust, and you could just die like that. Smacking yeah, he has him... A... Oof. Oh. Hitting him with an R2 on Dragon Bone Smasher, for whatever reason, just breaks him sometimes. Like, he T poses after the hit. And then <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, and sometimes it even reduces his speed when he dashes to half of what it normally is. Huh. I had that happen to run once, and I was afraid to get near him because I couldn't gauge how fast he might come at me. That's crazy. So. Uh, if he's, like, on a wall and he does his dash attack. Uh, he has no animation lined up before it. He'll just dash attack. Yeah, that's and, and scary. You can't react to it at all. And then sometimes if you're in the kind of like bottom stair area and he dashes towards you down there, he can like circle around you multiple times. <laughs> and like he'll be trying to dodge like constantly and then he'll just like fly in and kill you. And it's like, okay, I guess that was just bound to happen. But we killed him. Easy. Ooh. Now we're off. And now to we kill. fight the Shadow Tower reference boss. Oh, is it? You know more about I, that than I do. I you think so, because in Shadow Tower, the end boss is also a ruler who wanted power and turned into a blob. Except the ruler had a baby face. Like the, like the it was just a blob with a, a child's head. Ugh. Yeah, oh, I oh, I was trying to go for hyper mode strats on this guy, but he missed me with his first attack. And luckily, he's, he doesn't put, put up much of a fight. But time's coming up, uh, right as soon as the screen fades after killing the Maiden. Let's see if I can do a animation. And time. Nice. GG. That this is the bad very, ending. That was a very good run. Oh my Thanks. god, you stepped on her face. Oh no. Sorry, Maiden. <laughs> Feels bad. Sorry, speed requires me to do this. Yeah, Feels really it's bad. faster. The old one sensed a new and powerful demon. Now who is the real demon? It was all the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Didn't we just kill all the friends though? Bring more souls. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make more friends? I mean we, I mean we kinda killed all the old one's friends so we could become his <laughs> only friend. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. The sad tale. Demon Souls, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and you also get some of the best music in the game. Bad ending music. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for having me and Craigan on. Yeah, thank you. Both show off for some Demon here. Souls and um, uh, chill. Yeah, you did very, very well. I don't know if you wanted me to tell you the time or not, but... Oh, yeah, what's the time? 56.06. Oh, that's pretty uh, decent for a marathon. That's like... Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Well, anyway, everybody, thank you so much for watching today's episode of Time Capsule. And of course, a big thank you to our subscribers for making this hotfix content possible. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Do not forget to tune in to The First Step this Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time with Owlboy. Uh, and until then, I guess take care of yourselves. We'll see you later. Later, y'all. See you later. <laughs>